In VBA, we have many different ways of writing loops. And as you can imagine, this leads to a lot of confusion. So in this video, I'm going to simplify the whole process of using loops. I'm going to tell you when to use each one and which ones you can avoid. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we look at the different loops, we should understand why we need loops in the first place. Imagine we wanted to print the numbers 1 to 5 to the immediate window. We could use this code. Now this code is impractical for two reasons. Firstly, we need a line of code for each number, and if we had a thousand numbers, then we would need a thousand lines of code. And secondly, this code is not flexible. It always prints out exactly five numbers, and in the real world, we want our code to handle any number of items that we give it. We can replace this code with a for loop. And now we can change the number of times we print by simply changing the five to any number we want. And we can change this value to be a variable, which means our loop is now flexible. So now that you know how powerful loops are, let's look at the for loop in more detail. The for loop is by far the most used loop in Excel VBA. We use the for loop when we know in advance how many items we are dealing with. This code here will loop through all the rows in a range. And obviously this can be different each time the code runs. However, when we reach the loop, we know exactly how many times it will run. For example, here, row count is five, so we know that the for loop will run exactly five times. And this is the major difference between for loops and while and do while loops, as we shall see shortly. We typically use the for loop when we are reading through a range, reading through an array, reading through any type of collection, such as the standard collection or worksheets, workbooks, and so on. Now this takes us to the for each loop. We've already seen that the for loop can be used to reach a group of items such as a collection or an array. So we can also use the for each loop in the same scenarios as the standard for loop. For example, we can read through a collection using either loop. The main difference between them is that for each is neater to write and much faster when used with collections. For example, compare these two loops here. For each is neater because it doesn't require the index and it also makes it less prone to errors. The limitation of the for each loop is that you cannot always dictate the order. For example, if you read worksheets using the for each loop, it will always read them left to right. But if you want to read them in reverse, then you must use the standard for loop. The second limitation is that if you need the index, then you will have to use the standard for loop. For example, here we want to return the row number, so it makes much more sense to use the standard for loop in this case, or otherwise we have to create our own count. In terms of speed, the for each loop is significantly faster than the standard for loop when reading through a large collection. However, interestingly, it's worth noting that it's not the actual loop that is slow, but the retrieval of an item using an index. Conversely, the standard for loop is faster reading through arrays than the for each loop. However, it is not significantly faster. So in a nutshell, use the for each loop if you're dealing with some kind of collection. And if you need the index or want the items retrieved in a different order, then use the standard for loop. There are two remaining loops in VBA, the while loop and the do loop. The do loop can be written in four different ways, which leads to confusion. But I will show you a simple way of understanding this loop in a moment. Now, in the example on the screen, we have a while when loop and we have a do while loop. The loops in this example work in exactly the same way. So why do we have both of these loops in VBA? Well, the while when loop was the original loop, but it was eventually replaced by the more flexible do while loop. And the while when loop is still included in VBA for backwards compatibility, but there is no need to use it. We can use the do while loop instead. If we ignore the while when loop, we can say that we have three loops in VBA. The standard for loop, the for each loop, and the do loop. The difference between the for loops and the do loop is that with the for loops, we know the number of times we will run the loop in advance. So this could be the number of items in a collection, an array, a range, and so on. With the do loop, we don't know how many times it will run. We're essentially saying, run while a given condition is true. For example, imagine we were to ask the user to keep entering fruit names and to type the word end when they were finished. So this loop can run once or it could run a thousand times. We have no way of knowing in advance. We are simply saying perform an action until a given condition changes. Now let's look at some practical examples of where we would use the do loop. 
A quick pause to tell you about the Excel VBA Handbook course. Are you struggling to build VBA applications? Do you find it difficult to get good information on how to create real-world VBA code? Is it a struggle every time you try to create a VBA application, no matter how simple it is? Well, the Excel VBA Handbook course teaches how to build real-world Excel VBA applications from scratch. Unlike most courses, you won't be overwhelmed with information and left to figure out how to put it all together. Instead, you'll be taken step-by-step -step through 10 Excel VBA applications with every concept explained. Once you start working through VBA applications, you'll be amazed how quickly your VBA skills increase. So check out the VBA Handbook course at theexcelvbahandbook.com and the link can also be found in the description below the video. One common use of do while loops is when we are reading through a text file line by line. We don't know how many lines the file has until we reach the end of the file. Therefore, the do while loop is very suitable for this task. Another example is reading through files in a directory using the dir function. We keep repeating the loop until dir returns an empty string, and this means there's no files left. The do loop can be written in four ways. Let's go back to our fruit example so we can see what this means in practical terms. The loop keeps going until the user types end. But imagine we want to keep going until the user enters a blank string. We change the code to do this. But now, when we step through the code, you can see that it doesn't enter the loop. And this is because the fruit variable is initially an empty string. If we only had the while when loop, we would have to set the fruit variable to some default value. And we can see that this isn't convenient. But with the do loop, we can simply move the while condition to the end of the loop. And now when we run the code, you can see that we enter the loop. So the main difference between do while and loop while is simply the do loop will run at least once. The do while loop may not run at all. Now apart from this, after the first time, both loops work in exactly the same way. When using the do loop, we can replace the while with the until keyword. And the only difference between while and until is that the condition is reversed. So for example, instead of saying do while fruit does not equal an empty string, we can say do until fruit does equal an empty string. Similarly, when we say do while not end of file, we can say do until end of file. You can ignore until unless you really need to have the condition reversed. You may be overwhelmed with all this information, so I'm going to simplify it right now. Use the for each loop when dealing with any type of collection, including ranges, workbooks, worksheets, and so on. Use the standard for loop if you are using an array. The for loop is also useful if you want to read a collection in a different order. For example, if you wanted to read the list of worksheets in reverse. The for loop is also important if you want to access the position of a particular item. Use the do while loop when you don't know in advance when the loop will end. This could be reading through a file, reading through a folder using dir, or accepting user input. Move the while condition from the do line to the loop line if you want to make sure the loop runs at least once. In most cases, there's no real need to use the until keyword, and avoid using while when as it's obsolete. If you'd like to take a more in-depth look at the for loop, then check out this video on the screen.